engage young people every single day. You've traveled the world, you've lived in so many different cultures. What have you seen that has worked in achieving big dreams? What does it take to make big dreams happen? The first uh, quality that I've seen in young people is they realize that their youth is their capital. So number one is they don't get caught up in kind of the idea that youth is a liability not to be serious. That youth is like a liability to like kick it. They realize like, hey, this is, this is like a really blessed time. And they, they, they use that, what we call istithmar waqt, right? Like they take the fruit of that time. I think it's really important that we understand the value of time and the value of allowing young people to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes rather than legislating their every minute. And, and I've also seen that these people see it as being baked and not microwaved. I've seen that people that are successful have mentors, people that have done it before them. So they've walked that road and they can tell them, don't take a left here, don't take a right here, watch out for this. And then they have people around them who advise them. You know, as I think about what it takes to dream big and, and make it big and go beyond what the limits that people put on you are, I think you need at least four things. I think you need faith in Allah. Your dream is as big as your dua because it can't be about you. It has to be about giving back. I think that's very important. And the Prophet, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, defined success as trying. He didn't say you have to be perfect. He said, do your best. I think is really important about being a parent. If you're going to parent a child to dream big is we have to teach our children and ourselves how to fall. In the martial arts, judo, for example, the first thing you teach is how to fall, how to fall without breaking your neck, how to fall to be able to get back up. But we don't teach how to fall, we teach how to avoid falling. And so when the inevitable will happen, which is that we will fall, we fall with so much damage and we don't know how to get back up. And it's not natural. It's not, it's natural. not a natural fall. It's yeah. not a natural fall. And what I mean by that is how do we teach that it is going to happen that we're going to mess up? that we're going to disappoint ourselves and those who love us, and how to get up from that. How to not be so overwhelmed with shame that that fall ends up breaking us. How do we teach our community how to fall and get back up? Another thing that I've noticed about these people is that even though they're young, they appreciate financial independence, not financial opulence, they're not aimed at opulence, they're aimed at autonomy. Well, financial autonomy gives you the ability to make decisions without getting permission. I mean, that's, the autonomy is, is really an essential part of being able to dream big. Hmm. I why, do you, why do you say that? Autonomy is essential to dreaming big. Yeah. Why do you say that? That's deep. To have the flexibility to make your own choice. Hmm. To, to chart your own path. And I, I think one of the reasons that so many of us shy away from that big dream is as you said, fear. I was given the, an opportunity to give a TED talk on the main stage of the TED conference. And I saw Steven Spielberg in the audience. I saw the, uh, the founder of Twitter. I'm, you know, normal person about to go up on this stage and how am I gonna impress these people? And if I was focused on impressing this audience, I would have been crippled with fear. And once I changed my mindset, I found the courage. And it came from a desire to give rather than to take. And I think so often we're afraid because we feel we are in a place of need for approval and acceptance rather than in a place of generosity, of having something to give. When I first started learning Arabic, there was this uncle in the mosque. He was so harsh, man, in Oklahoma. He would come to me and he would say, you know, 
No Ajnabi will learn Arabic. I don't ever think a non-Arab can learn Arabic. And I'm learning Arabic. And I was like, what's wrong with this dude? But I used to let that be that, that firewood man in the stove. And I had to like turn down invitations. I couldn't play video games with my friends. I couldn't play a lot of basketball. I had to sacrifice to stay focused. Yeah. You know, I think that that point about sacrificing to stay focused and doing these extraordinary things that you've been able to do, it goes to this question of how do we be from among the few? I'm going to say something that may be a little different. Hmm. You got to have a little swagger to do that, right? Not, not arrogance. There's a difference between arrogance and confidence. Mm -hmm. Got to be a little confident in the sense like, I may not have done it, but I see myself doing it. And, and when I see myself doing it, I see the process of how to get there. Insightful as to, hey, I believe that God will help me do this, but I got to work hard, right? So, so there's a healthy kind of balance of humility, grace, and thankfulness to God, adab and respect with, oh, I'm about to get this. Mm. How do you build that up? Because I think so many of us are feeling beat down, are feeling... Yeah. They've, there's so much self-doubt, and it's, uh, it's perpetuated with social media. The longer you spend on social media, the worse you feel about yourself. So how do you maintain that confidence? How do you build it up? I mean, it comes and goes. None mm -hmm. of us are always there. But I think having mentors, if possible, if not having mentors, finding good content, finding it like your TED Talk, right? I can go online and I can find a tremendous amount of motivational, powerful, well-informed material that speaks to what I'm going through. Even reading, right? Reading is helpful. So if lack of confidence is thinking less of yourself, confidence is thinking of yourself less. In that process of achieving my dream, I'm not always the main star of the production. Mm. Because if I see it as a process, then there are going to be times where I have to be in the back. Right. And, and that allows me to learn the whole process of achieving this dream. For parents and people in the audience, do not underestimate the importance of love, man. And I don't necessarily mean love that makes people you know, get an inflated ego. Real love is also to tell people sometimes, I love you, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Because the Prophet is very beautiful in Hadith. He called love Ruhullah, the mm -hmm. Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. One of the scholars said, because just as the Spirit of God brought life to a dead creature, which is us, yeah. love resuscitates people. It brings them life like Adam was brought to life. So there's rebirth. Divorcing ourselves of the outcome. It's, it's the most counterintuitive concept when you're trying to dream big. But the easiest way to not achieve your dream is to become obsessively stubborn about a specific outcome the way that you think it has to look, is about flexibility, is about being agile, being able to achieve the mission without it looking exactly or the way that you think it should go. So divorcing yourself of both credit and outcome is a key ingredient to dreaming big. Wajazakallahu khayran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Coco.